All right, let's take a look at kind of the things we're going to work through today. So this is in Canvas under the agenda. Um, SpongeBob. It's, I know that's not the title of this worksheet. Everything on it is SpongeBob related, so I'm calling it SpongeBob Scientific Variables. This, we're going to go through the first problem together. The rest of you is, the rest are for you to finish for homework um, tonight. When I, most of my due dates, unless I'm very specific, um, are due at 11.59 of the evening stated. So they are due, this one, for example, is due tonight at 11.59. When you get to question number three and question number four, when I made the photocopies, um, some graphs didn't print on them. Okay, I apologize. We didn't catch it until like second hour. The, where you can find these images is so this is the activity this is where you will turn in your pictures of your assignment anyways i posted number like missing images so here's number three and here's the image for number four so it's in canvas under your assignment submission point so this is where you would find the information to draw your conclusions for question number three and number four okay so that's my mistake but I hope that's an okay way to get it. If you say, can I, can I like take a picture of that? Sure, let me know and I can put it back on the screen and you can take a picture of us later and do that. Um, you're gonna get some work time on some other things. So um, kind of skip, if you haven't taken your safety quiz and gotten 100% on it, you needed to do that. If you don't have 100% on your safety quiz yet, I assigned you for ELT today. You're coming in to take it in here during ELT until you get 100%. So some of you have been assigned to ELT because you don't have 100 on your safety quiz yet. Okay, so be aware of that. If you get it taken care of yet today, and hopefully I'll see it in time that I can remove you from ELT. If you are assigned, and it's taken care of, but I haven't removed you, you still need to come to ELT. Once I see that we're good, I'll say, okay, you're good, you can be on your way. But if I haven't cleared you from attendance, if your ELT teacher says, hey, you're assigned to Mr. Davies, you need to come to Mr. Davies, and then we'll take care of it, even if you do have it taken care of, okay? Once I, it will take a couple minutes, right? This activity called POGO, it's, in a, it's that staple packet, there's four pages, um, experimental variable is called you got it last Friday you had a little bit of time on Friday you had a little bit of time today you should have a little bit of time to work on it today that is going to be due as well the Redis seed lab report okay I want to make some clarifications on the Redis seed lab report due on last Sunday there was an assignment called s1 Redis seed labs through the procedures some of you have not turned this in. If you haven't turned this in, I haven't looked at them, but if you have no submission, you are assigned to ELT today. This is the first half of your lab report. Your data table is probably empty because you hadn't collected data yet. You haven't drawn a graph because you don't have your data yet. Okay, now maybe now you do have your graph, maybe you do have your data. This needs to get turned in to S1. I am grading only the first half of your lab report from your name through the procedures. That's what S1 is. S1 is the content standard or the, the standard for biology about experimental design. And that's what that first half of your lab report is. Due on Wednesday, I'm not going to give you work time tomorrow in class. Due on Wednesday is the second half. It's standard number two. Standard number two is analyzing and interpreting data. We're collecting data in our data table. We're graphing data in our graph. We are drawing conclusions based upon our data in our analysis and conclusion section. This is a separate standard. There's two different standards for your RADIC labs. There's two separate submissions you need to do. Now, if you make a revision, someone asked this question. If I change something in the first half, like oh, I screwed up on the procedures, I, I fixed it now. Realize that when you submit something in Canvas through Docs, you go share and export to uh, send a copy as a PDF. It freezes that, in, that document in time and then submits it. Doesn't mean you can't resubmit it, but if you make a change that you want evaluated, you need to resubmit it. 
Unless you tell me otherwise, I'm going to evaluate and leave you feedback on the most recent one. Okay, so if you say, hey, if you type some comment like, I missed it, I screwed up, please look at the previous one, just type a comment, I'll see it. Okay, this is only the first half. Now, if you have your entire lab report from start to finish complete and you turn it into S1, realize I am only grading S1 for the first half. You also need to turn in your lab report to S2. It's a separate assignment. And then I'm going to look at the second half. If you want revisions, then you need to resubmit it, send it that through Canvas again. Questions about the radish seed? Okay. Then I want to go through experimental design, SpongeBob, the first example together. All right, Patty Power. Mr. Krabs wants to make Bikini Bottoms a better place to live. He creates a new sauce that he thinks will reduce the production of body gas associated with, associated with eating Krabby Patties from the Krusty Krab. He recruits 100 customers with a history of gas problems. He has 50 of them, Group A, eat Krabby Patties with, this, with the new sauce. The other 50, Group B, eat Krabby Patties with sauce that looks like the new sauce, but is really just a mixture of mayonnaise and food coloring. Both groups were told that they were getting the sauce that would reduce gas production. Two hours after eating the Krabby Patties, 30 customers in Group A reported having fewer gas problems, while eight customers in Group B reported having fewer gas problems. So let's start with the second question. The second question asks us, what is the independent variable? What did I, Mr. Krabby, take the role of like the first person kind of approach to this? What did Mr. Krabs, sorry, Mr. Krabs change? What is the thing that he changed in the experiment? The sauce? Yeah, he changed the sauce, right? He's changing whether you get the new sauce or the mayonnaise food coloring sauce. He changed the sauce. That's your independent variable. So when we talk about a control group, the control group is the group that did not get the treatment. And in this case, the treatment is the new sauce. So which group did not get the new sauce? That's our control group. It's the group that didn't get the treatment. In this case, it's group B. Group B got the mayonnaise and food coloring. They got the fake sauce. They were lied to, by the way. They were lied to and were told that they're getting the good sauce or the new sauce, but they just got mayonnaise with food coloring. We already kind of talked, what did I change in the experiment? I being Mr. Krabs. The dependent variable is what was measured. So what did Mr. Krabs measure with these groups? Right, we were looking for the amount of people that had re, re, said they had less gas problems. So what are we measuring? The amount of people who claim to have gas problems. Okay, the amount of customers with gas problems. That's what Mr. Krabs is measuring. He's trying to evaluate if the new sauce helps with gas problems. Standardized variables, also known as a control variable, are the things that you think could affect the gas problems. You think it might affect it, so therefore we have to keep them the exact same in both groups. We have to standardize it, or we call it a controlled variable. So what are some things Mr. Krabs kept identical in both group A and group B? That's what a standardized variable or a controlled variable. Yeah. There were 50 people in each. He kept the sample size the same, right? 50 and 50. So he kept the sample size the same. Now, whether that directly impacts, it's, it's better for data collection, but it is something that, yeah, it's a standardized. He kept them the same. What else? I'll be honest. I don't know what a Krabby Patty is, and if someone told me that there was a bun on a Krabby Patty, and I'm like, wait a second. In my mind, I was envisioning like a crab cake, but apparently that's not what a Krabby Patty is. I didn't watch SpongeBob when I grew up. It wasn't a thing yet, so I apologize. So what things were the same on the Krabby Patties that he gave Group A versus Group B? Like after those 12, 32 hours. 
Right, so the duration of time that we're measuring the effect. So they both had, we waited two hours before we said, hey, how's your gas problems today? Kind of a personal question, I guess, but that's what we were asking. So we let two hours pass. What else? Again, I found out a Krabby Patty has a burger, a bun on it. So what should be true about the buns? Yeah, whoever that was, they should be the same bun, right? They should be the same patty. They should be the same everything. The time of day would be good. What did you eat before? I mean, if we really want, what did you eat for breakfast that day? Okay, but that's the idea. Okay, so in some of my other classes, they said the bun, the toppings. I'm assuming there's toppings on a credit patty based upon what they told me, except the sauce, right? That has to change because that's our independent variable. The patty, the serving size, the time of day, as many things as possible, okay? As long as you have a couple, we're good. You don't have to have more. Now, in order to draw a valid, in order to draw a conclusion from an experiment, it needs to be what we refer to as a valid experiment. A valid experiment is an experiment that changes one and only one independent variable. It changes one thing and one thing only. If, and in this case, we change the sauce and only the sauce. Because what if I would have changed group A got the new sauce and a different bun than group B got the fake sauce and a different bun. If group A and group B got two different buns and they got two different sauces, if there was a change, observable change about gas problems, what caused it? Was it the bun or was it the sauce? And if the answer is, we don't know, then the answer is, it was an invalid experiment, okay? Because you can't draw any conclusions based on an invalid experiment. You can make a statement. You can make a statement along the lines of, the new sauce and this bun seem to have reduced the amount of gas, but you can't draw a conclusion based upon the experiment because you changed two things, therefore it's an invalid experiment. But because he only changed the sauce, we're going back to the original question. He's trying to determine if the new sauce reduces gas problems. Group A had 30 out of 50 said they had fewer gas problems. Group B had eight out of, uh, eight out of 50, 30 out of 50. Eight out of 50 said they had fewer gas problems. So based upon group A getting the new sauce and group B got the fake sauce, does the new sauce, according to Mr. Krabs' data, suggest that it might have some impact? Yeah. It'd be a fair conclusion to say the new sauce causes fewer gas problems for the customers. And you don't have, it, it, the idea is because it was a valid experiment, and we talked about a valid, if we were to change the size of the patty and the sauce, was it the patty size or was it the sauce? Okay, so we have to have a valid experiment with only one thing. Let's just talk about what could have caused those eight people in group B, why might they have had less gas than they did before? They got the fake stuff, remember, right? They got mayonnaise and food color. Why would they maybe have less? What's one possible explanation for that? Not to get too personal, but are there some days that maybe a person is more gassy? I'm sorry, has a gas problem than others? Maybe. Maybe it has nothing to do with what they ate for that meal. Maybe it has something to do with the meal they ate before that. Maybe they knew they were going to eat a Krabby Patty and, well, I'm going to take some type of pill ahead of time not knowing they were about to be part of a research study. I'm making stuff up right now. The other thing I do want to address it could be randomness, right? There is random chance associated with some of this stuff. But there's this thing called a placebo effect. And I want to take a couple minutes to talk about a placebo effect. This is what we could call a blind study. Both groups were told they were getting the treatment, but neither group knew who was actually getting the treatment. 
Group B thought they were getting it, but they were blind because they didn't know for sure if they were. It's called a blind study. They received what we would call the placebo, the fake stuff. And they do this in clinical research. If you are do in like a, a drug trial, um, let's just make something up. Like you're getting a drug for, you're in a study looking at anxiety. And you say, hey, we're going to give you this pill and it should help you with your anxiety. And then they're going to measure how your anxiety is over the duration of the study. Some of the research, some of the people will get a, the real pill that they're testing. The other people are going to get the placebo, or they often refer to it as like a sugar pill. It's a fake pill, has absolutely no value in terms of making and lowering anxiety. But time and time again, the psychological impact of someone saying, I am going to give you this, this pill is going to help you with this, your brain actually like, hey, I'm going to get something that's going to help me with my anxiety. And it might, might actually lower your anxiety because your brain thinks it's lowering your anxiety. It's called the placebo effect. Okay, so... In this case, they were lied to, essentially, or misled, to think they were getting the new sauce. So maybe they think like, hey, I'm not as gas, I don't have as many gas problems today because I got this new sauce. But it's really their mind kind of messing with them. There are studies out there. There was a knee surgery they used to do, common knee surgery for to deal with, I don't remember what it was. I think it was some type of arthritis. Um, that it was kind of mixed results on whether it was successful, like it, it fixed the, the ailment or not. So they did a study. I don't think it was in the U.S. I think we might have some laws against this. But they went through and they did the surgery to a group of people, and then another group was told they were getting the surgery. They were lied to, misled, misled. They assigned that they could They knew this going into it. But they were like, they, they did the orthoscopic where they put like the probes in. They made incisions on their knees. They manipulated, they turned the person, they bent their knee and all that stuff, but they didn't actually do the true surgery on the knee. And then they measured the effects. Like, hey, how's your knee feeling after you had the surgery? They never got the surgery, but they didn't know that. And the results were like split. The people who got the real surgery had almost the exact same success rate as the people who never actually had the surgery. Guess what? They don't do the surgery anymore because it didn't really, wasn't any better than not doing the surgery. Okay? So there's some laws, there's some rules about that, um, but it's called the placebo. There are some people who might go through and say, hey, I gave you this pill that I said was going to help you with anxiety. It was really the placebo after the fact we told you, hey, you didn't really get the real treatment. You just got the sugar pill. And despite knowing that they got the sugar pill, they still want the sugar pill. Why? Because they, it helped them. Even though they knew it was a fake pill after the fact, the, knowing the fake pill was still a fake pill, it still helped them with, say, their anxiety, which is kind of a weird thing that your brain can still kind of trick itself even though it knows it's being tricked. That doesn't work all the time, but sometimes that, that is reported. But, so we call it a placebo effect. Okay, so questions about that. There's three more that we want you to look through and for you to answer. Um, that's part of your assignment for today. Um, other things, again, I'm gonna give you some work time here to work. This is gonna get submitted in Canvas. Remember, there's a data table for question number three that was missing, and there's number four. It's in the assignment called SpongeBob Scientific Variable Worksheet. Your lab report, S1 versus S2, the polar activity called experimental variables, and then again, the safety quiz. So some of you were assigned to ELT because you didn't have 100 on your safety quiz or you don't have S1 uh, of your right seed lab report yet. And at the end of the last period, I checked it to make sure that those were still accurate. Um, and I removed anyone who has taken care of that. But at this point, um, at least last I looked, we were, we were pretty set on it. So now some time to work. If you have questions, please, 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 please ask. I'm here to answer those questions. Um, if you want to work with your partner on something, remember this is your lab report. It's your data table. It's your graph. It's your words. It's your voice in that lab that you are going to submit individually.